Motion graphics are one of the most important factors to making good editing. So that's why in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make motion graphics on both Capture and Premiere Pro. Anyway, let's get into the tutorial. Before I explain what motion graphics really are, I now have a Patreon, but wait, don't skip yet, because if you like my tutorials or just want to support me, this is going to interest you. My Patreon has all the resources I use in my videos, for example this one that is going to have all of the motion graphic resources I use, along with help on how to replicate the same graphics but with your skin or design. Along with this, it comes with private one-to-one -one help with anything you need on either Premiere Pro or CapCut, and even comes with some bonus rewards like a custom discord role and shout outs in every video for as long as you're subscribed to my patreon you can get all of this for just short of eight dollars but because i've released my patreon it's discounted at six dollars fifty cents so if you want to make the best content you can go to patreon.com slash jlmod today and get 20 percent off for the next week of this video being out anyway let's get into the video the first software that we're going to start with is CapCut. Now the resources you're going to need are your motion graphic resources which I split into two parts. The reason I've split it up into two parts is so I can animate each individually and merge them together to make this really cool motion graphic effect. Along with this I also have this end stone background that I applied some effects on. Let's put on my pre-made motion graphic 2 and 1. Rearrange them and then you can see this is what my motion graphic is going to look like. If we highlight both of them we can move them at the same time. So I'm going to resize it to around this size here. And then we're going to leave one second of space. So I go to one second right here. And then we can start animating pre-made motion one. You can see here if we rotate it. You can see the middle head and the second outer ring stays the same. Or everything else is rotating. This is going to give it a really nice effect. So go over to one second. I'm going to select the rotation keyframe. And then I'm going to go to three and a half seconds into the video. I'm going to select my rotation keyframe again and I'm gonna just keep putting it around until I get to a value I like which for me is gonna be 720. Now if we watch this back we can already see that we've kind of made a nice motion thing but it is not clean at all. This is where our first keyframe animation is gonna come in the video. To open up the graph menu right click and show keyframe animation then you should see the rotation one but if you used any other properties in that thing it'll come up with more. Click the down arrow just right of the screen and then it should come up with this big graph menu. If this is your first time using keyframe animations, it's going to be a bit confusing, but I'm going to break it down for you. Click the first keyframe here and select auto curve. Go to the second one and select auto curve again. Then this blue line here, we want to drag to around the middle and then drag the first one to the middle as well. Once you've done that, it should create this long S shape here, which is something we want. So now if you watch it back, this is what our animation should look like which just looks so much cleaner than the one before. Once we've finished doing this, we can hide the keyframe animation. And then this is where we're gonna group our pre-made animations together. I'm gonna select both of these animations. I'm going to right click and create a compound clip. This basically merges both of the layers together and means that we can select certain keyframes which will apply to both of these. If at any point you want to undo the compound clip, you can right click and select undo compound clip. Then I'm going to come over to this transform keyframe which is going to highlight all of these different factors. And then I'm going to go one second in just before our animation started, select it again. Then I'm going to go back to the first one and drag my thing off screen. Then I'm going to right click Click show keyframe animation with the Y. And we're going to animate the same thing like we just did with the rotation. I'm going to drag them both to the middle just like this and it should make a very nice S shape. This one's more visible because there's more animation in this so it's much clearer to see the S shape. Now once we've done that this is what the result should look like. If the rotation looks a bit choppy, that's fine because when you render it in 60 FPS, it's gonna look just so much cleaner. To check if your thing's in 60 FPS, come over here to where it says frame rate, and if it says 30, click modify, go to frame rate, and set it to 60, and then click save. Then I'm gonna highlight both my endstone background and this compound clip that we just made. Right click and create a compound clip. What this is gonna do is merge them all together now, which is where we're gonna animate the zoom in animation. I'm gonna go to one second. 
select this transform. I'm gonna go all the way over to the three seconds. I wanna zoom it in a bit and move it to the left. If we look at back, this is what it should look like. So we're gonna animate the keyframes. Now this one's gonna be a lot more difficult than the others because there's more properties that we changed. We didn't change the Y, but we changed the X and the scale. Meaning when we have to animate the keyframes, you have to keep them the same as possible. Otherwise it's gonna look really weird. So I'm gonna select both of them to auto curve, drag them to around the middle. Then I'm gonna go down to my X, do the same thing as I did to the scale. So when we look back, this is what the final result should be. Now this is where you can customize it to whatever you want and what I'm going to do is go over to text and I'm going to import some text right here. I'm going to go to 3 seconds where this animation has stopped. I'm going to set it to a random thing like strength 2. You can change the font and the color. Then I'm going to give it some glow. I'm going to set the intensity down to around 25 and the range up. I'm going to scale it down a bit like this. I'm going to go down until it says transform. Click it. Go 1 second in so to four seconds set it again and go to the first one and then drag our thing off screen i'm going to right click show keyframe animation go to y select both to auto curve drag them to the middle right click and hide keyframe animation and now once we've done all of that this is what the final result should look like Anyway, now we've covered this, let's get into Premiere Pro. Now, once you get into Premiere Pro, you should be probably on a screen like this, and I put, I've already put my background on. Then go up to the top, click Sequence, then Sequence Settings. Go over to Time Base and select 60 frames a second. And make sure your video frame size is 1920 by 1080 or 16 by 9. And then once you've done that, you can just click OK. Next step we're going to do is be putting on our motion graphics here, which you can get in my Patreon. And there's even a custom design one where you can change it in whatever way you want. So once you've got your graphics, you can just put them on one by one. And this is where we're going to be starting to animate it. To get to the keyframes, get the video that you want to edit, go up to the top where it says effect controls. If you don't have it, click window and go down to effect controls here but then once you're on it you should see motion and then there's position scale rotation anchor point and anti-flicker filter along with opacity and time remapping the only ones that we're really going to be focusing on is position scale and rotation so go around one second in click rotation go around three and a half seconds into the video and i'm going to rotate it to around 720 or two times two times around and if you watch this back that's what it looks like. And this is where we're going to be editing the keyframes to make it look really, really smooth. Now, the good thing about Premiere Pro is it's got an extremely better advantage when it comes to keyframe animations. So I'm going to be showing you how you can do that today. Highlight both of your keyframes in this section here. And you can move this bar if you want to zoom in or out. Right click on the keyframes and then select Bezier. This is going to make it really nice and smooth, but we aren't done yet. Go over to the beginning of the rotation here and select this down arrow. This is going to open a massive menu which has the same type of thing as in CapCut but also this one here which we're going to be using a lot. So first we're going to just drag it down to the beginning part here. I'm just going to push it forward and then I'm going to do the same for this side until it makes this kind of hump shape here. So now if we watch back it looks really nice and clean. So now once we've done that, we're going to highlight both the pre-made motion one and the two. Right click and then click nest. This is basically like creating a compound clip in CapCut, but it's just a lot more easier because it's got more high quality and it won't lag. So go to effect controls, select position, go one second in and select position again. Go to the first one and you can either drag this value off screen or you can click motion, hold down your click button, hold shift and then just drag it off screen. Either way is going to be good. Then we're going to highlight both of them again. Right click Temporal Interpolation and then select Bezier. Crop it down a bit and select this arrow here. Both of these are going to be straight but we just want to drag them down like this and then kind of pull them to the middle just like this. So now the final results should look like this. But we aren't done yet. Highlight both your end stone and your nested sequence one. Right click nest. You can see it still has the same amount of quality. So we're going to click on nested sequence. Go to effect controls. Go one second in. Select a position and scale. Go around three seconds in and then select them both again. And we're going to be zooming it in a bit like this and then moving it across like this. 
Then we're gonna highlight all of these keyframes. Right click, temporal and turbulation, select bezier. Then on the position one, we're gonna do the same thing as we did just before. So we're gonna be putting them together, create that. And then the same for the scale. So then once you've done that, you can click off. And this is gonna be the final result of our motion graphics tutorial. To export it, click export, and then you should come up with all of this. Make sure the frame rate here is 60, and the same for the output, and it's 1920 by 1080, and then you can just click export. Anyway, that's going to be all for today's tutorial. Comment down below what you want to see next, but without further ado, I'll see you in the next one.